Hello, and in this screencast on Apache Isis, I'm going to show you a new plugin we've put together that integrates Apache Isis with JRebel. JRebel, if you've not come across it as a commercial product, you need to pay money if you're working on anything other than a hobby project. But it, uh, it's, its claim to fame is it allows you to develop your application, a web app, without having to redeploy. It uh, manages the, the class loading behind the scenes using a clever Java agent. And so up on GitHub, I've got a new little uh, project that has the integration between ISIS and JRebel and the, the details about how to configure things. But let me run through and give you a quick demo. So I've got Eclipse here. I've installed the JRebel plugin. Uh, if I go to the JRebel config center, I've configured the uh, plugin, the JRebel plugin, to uh, track uh, the simple DOM project and also the web app project for the simple application that is in the ISIS source code. That's also the application we use in the simple archetype, if you've ever used that. And so here's the code. If I go to the um, uh, the source main resources folder, we can see the rebel.xml file there. What I've also done then is I've uh, taken a copy of one of the launch files and I've created a jrebel launch file. Uh, and uh, all that's in there basically, and again, this is in the GitHub uh, notes on the readme, uh, is that on the arguments tab, we've got, uh, for the right project that is, uh, on the arguments tab, we've got some extra stuff here to say, run the JRebel agent, and then the plugin here is, is this stuff, which is the jar file for the GitHub project. Okay, so let's run the application. So as I say, the simple, app is very very simple it's uh, used for our archetype as i mentioned and uh, if i browse to the app as it's running we can install some fixtures and then we can list using the simple objects repository service we can list all the objects and there are three of them and it's a very simple thing that has a a string property just make sure it's working i can just change the value Okay, so let's now go back to Eclipse and start changing stuff and then picking up those changes without having to redeploy the application. So uh, first thing I might just do on the um, simple object domain service, let's rename that action from list all to list everything. And if I just reload the page here, um, you can see that now has been picked up automatically. And um, I could also factor out method there and let's change it back why not let's reload the page again and we can see we're back to list all but more interesting would be to change entities and so let's do that with a simple object entity so for example we could maybe rename using the isis annotation this field or this property rather from name to whatever so um, let's do a little and we can see that that has now indeed changed the column title of the table and it's there as the label of the entity. Uh, more interesting would be to introduce a new property. So let's copy that stuff. Let's rename aim to aim2. You can tell I was rehearsing this, can't you? Um, it's a new property, so we'd better um, not have it as mandatory so let's do that save that and let's do a list all again and we can see that's been picked up um, a couple of uh, releases ago isis introduced the notion of picking up the ordering of, um, of of members from a file a json file but now we have this capability we can kind of not use that we need not use that anymore so i'm going to remove an entry from there and i'm going to use annotations instead to specify the order of the members so let's say the name is 10 and name 2 is 20 let's save that so hopefully with the following wind yeah whatever that was name is before name 2 let's just prove we can still interact with these guys Okay, so that's working fine. Um, let's 
add a new property uh, again. Uh, so we'll need to change this from two to three, so that's name three. And this time I'm going to say that uh, it's going to be mandatory. I'm going to have to provide a default value for the existing stuff. Let's put an X there. Okay, so let's go with that. Now occasionally, I don't know if we'll get it this time, you might get an exception. If you do get an exception, we didn't, it's all worked fine, and there's our new column X is there. If you do get an exception, it means it's a temporary mismatch between the objects that are in memory and the JDN metadata. Um, but I reload the persistence manager factory, I reload the JDO stuff. Um, so it'll basically uh, be fine for the next interaction. So there we are, so we're able to add some properties. Uh, they can be optional, they can have default value, they can be mandatory with default values. Um, let's move a property again. And uh, hopefully that property will disappear. Oh, there you go, there's an example of, of, an, of a temporary error. But if I were just to uh, list again, you can see we're up and running. So there you are, that's, that's the demo. Um, this is running against uh, ISIS 140 snapshot, so it's not yet available unless you rebuild ISIS from source code. Uh, there are details about how to do that on our website, uh, on the documentation page uh, down here. But um, you can you can certainly go and give that a go. Here's some of the URLs you might want to just uh, make a note of. And um, we'll be putting out 140 in, in the not too distant future anyway. Okay, hope that hope you enjoy that. Give it a go. Let us know how you get on.